Hey, it's Michelle, your CNC Biology Tutor. In this video, I'll be sharing with you seven tips for studying biology in hopes to get you exam ready. So let's start. Tip number one, and it's the most obvious tip, read. The number one way to gain knowledge and understanding of all the various topics and processes and organ structures, you name it, in biology, you have to read. You cannot get around it. So you need to be able to read the recommended textbooks. You need to read the class notes given by your teacher and even researching articles that you may see online or newspapers, anything related to the topics that you're learning in class. So reading is essential. So here is something that you can try. If you find yourself getting bored while you're reading, read out loud. Read out loud from your notes or textbook and then try to repeat out loud as well the main concepts you've learned after a paragraph, a section or even a chapter. So this is known as active reading and it will engage your brain and the key senses of sight and sound. So this is a good way of preventing yourself from getting bored and sleepy while you're reading. All right, let's move on to tip number two write. Now reading and writing go hand in hand. As you're reading, it's important to write down keywords and definitions on cue cards or maybe summary sheets to help reinforce what you've read. So this is also going to help you to remember the correct spelling of challenging words. And I'm telling you, in biology, you're going to come across so many complex terms, words that some of them you may not be even able to pronounce. So writing is essential. So try this. When you're writing, making your notes, use highlighters or colored pencils, and this is gonna attract you to your notes a little more. So you can use specific colors to highlight certain topics, concepts, and emphasize important points. And then you can also try using memory techniques that would help you to remember certain, certain steps or processes certain things that may be in an order. So for instance, Mrs. Nurg. This is an acronym to help you to remember the characteristics of living organisms. And then to remember the levels of classification, we have kids prefer candy over fried green spinach. So the kingdom, phytum, class, order, family, genus, species. So that's gonna help you to remember the order of the levels of classification. So Writing with color is a good way to enhance your notes and also using memory techniques. So you can try that. All right, let's go on to tip number three, draw. And we're talking biology here. So you know that drawing is involved. Make sure you're able to make label drawings for different structures, organs, and cycles that you should know. And then also be able to use flow diagrams to break down the main steps in complex processes. So what you can try, try creating a folder of drawings and flow diagrams of the, the key structures and organs and pathways and processes that you can use in your revision time. So for instance, here I have an example of the simple reflex pathway showing you the, the pathway that nervous impulses would take from receptors to effectors. So that is an example of a flow diagram. So just make sure you're able to label, to draw and label the main organs and structures that you need to know. And then breaking down the complex processes and pathways in flow diagrams. So that is a useful tip that you can try. All right, let's move on to tip number four, which is watch. So watching videos with animations is so important because videos engage your senses of sight and sound and help you to better understand and remember complex functions and processes. So make sure that you take the time to research videos on the topics that you're covering. The animations are gonna bring alive the processes and then explanations that you may not have understood by reading alone that would these videos would allow you to to gain a better understanding so what you can do 
is to compile a YouTube playlist. Um, after each topic, search for videos online that relate to what you've learned and write down key concepts explained. So saving these videos for later review is very, very important. So let's go on to the next tip. Tip number five, teach. I know it sounds crazy, but after learning a topic thoroughly, try explaining the key concepts to a family member or a friend or perhaps even yourself in the mirror. If you really understand a topic, and if you understand it really well, you should be able to talk about it to someone you know, and it shouldn't be so difficult to do that. So what I recommend, try teaching your friends or classmates, gather a group of your friends taking the same class, and take turns teaching each other the topics that you've learned. So the end goal here is for them to understand your explanations clearly. So this will determine how well you can articulate what it is that you've learned. So this is actually a very important tip. So when you are able to teach something, that means that you have grasped the concepts very well. All right, let's go on to tip number six, test. You need to test yourself. Answering test questions from your textbooks, taking quizzes, doing all the assignments that your teacher gives you to do, this is important for assessing your knowledge and understanding. So it helps to determine any weak areas so you can focus on improving them. So testing yourself is key. So try taking written tests at the end of each topic. Check the answers if provided at the back of the textbook or you can ask your teacher kindly to correct them for you. And keep these tests that you would have done organized in order so you can review them in the future particularly coming up to exam time. All right, let's move on to the final tip. Tip number seven, practice. Practice, practice, practice answering exam questions from past papers. This is so important and it's gonna help you to be familiarized with the exam format, you know, the type of questions that will come, and it may even reveal some trends in the topics that can often come. So practicing exam papers are very, is very, very important. So what you can do is try timing yourself answering the questions. So not only practicing the actual papers, but timing yourself while you are doing the papers. So you set a clock or a watch to alarm when the time is up. So you're trying to complete the paper in the allotted time that is given. Or you can even set aside a specific amount of time to answer or select questions from a paper. So say you can give yourself 15 minutes to answer one particular essay type question. So this is really important to ensure that you do not take too long on one question because that can happen. You may spend too much time trying to answer one question and then that is a lot of time being wasted. So you need to really practice answering, your, answering the questions within a given time. And one other thing that you should bear in mind is that when you are taking the exam, do the questions, answer the questions that are easier for you to answer. Questions that you know very well that you can answer quickly and then leave the more difficult ones for later because you don't want to be wasting time trying to answer a difficult question when you could be working on a simpler question. So that is a bonus tip there. So here are the seven tips for you again. Read, write, draw, watch, teach, test, and practice. So I hope that you found this video helpful in your preparation for exams. So thank you for watching and I wish you all the best in your exams.